Throughout Attack on Titan, one memory is constantly resurfaced throughout the narrative. Not only is this memory one of Eren's key sources of motivation and one of the most important sources of insight into his character, but it also adds great thematic depth to the end of the entire Attack on Titan story, in a way that has been overlooked by many people. So what is this memory, and how does it define Eren as a character? The first time we see it is all the way back in Chapter 4, right at the start of the Battle of Trostark. Eren, blinded by his bloodlust for the Titan who ate Thomas, gets his leg bitten off. In the moments that follow, Armin then witnesses many of his fellow scouts being crushed and eaten by Titans, until a bearded Titan picks him up and drops him in his mouth. Eren then flashes back to the memory in question, which is the audience's first glimpse into this key moment of his childhood. The memory begins with two large panels of Eren staring into the clouds, mouth wide open, with a blank, almost trance-like expression on his face. We then see Armin excitedly run up to Eren, explaining his grandfather's book about the outside world. At first, Eren seems hesitant to accept the things Armin is saying, but upon seeing the glint in his eyes, Eren begins reflecting Armin's excitement as Armin says he hopes that they will explore the outside world together one day. Recalling this memory, and particularly the goal of together exploring the outside world, gives Eren the motivation to stand up on his one good leg, grab Armin out of the mouth of the bearded titan, and keep fighting to survive. We see this memory referenced frequently throughout the remainder of the Battle of Trostark, acting as a source of motivation for Eren, reminding him that he fights so that he can freely explore the outside world. But it isn't until chapter 73 that we get a thorough reframing of this memory. At the beginning of the return to Shiganshina arc, the scouts are walking through the forest at night, heading towards Shiganshina. Eren, shaking out of anticipation of what is to come, recalls the memory once again. But this time we get a key piece of information that makes this memory so important to defining Eren's character as a whole. We again start with two large panels of Eren staring into the clouds, with Eren's narration telling us that back in those days he had never thought about what was beyond the walls. All he did was spend his time looking at the clouds in the sky. Armin then comes running into frame, explaining his book about the outside world with a glint in his eyes, but what we see from Eren now is very different to the original depiction of this memory in Chapter 4. Eren does not reflect the excitement that Armin is exuding, but rather looks to be in a state of shock, as though his entire world has been shaken to the core. Eren then states plainly that this was the first time in his life that he realized that he wasn't free, and on realizing that, he viscerally knew that he could never forgive the ones that had taken his freedom away. At the time, the audience sees this as a triumphant moment for Eren. He stops shaking and is now ready to defeat the enemies that are ahead of him, the enemies that have taken away his freedom. We, the audience, are relieved to see that he is not losing his confidence as he did in the Uprising arc. He is re-motivated by this reframed memory, and we are glad to once again hear his declaration of extermination against the Titans. But looking back, we now see this memory as the moment that made the Eren that we know today, the man who would go on to exterminate the world, forsake his friendships, his sanity, his life, as well as cement the death of his own mother, all for the sake of a freer world. Now with that in mind, it's time to examine one of the most famous panels of the manga. Chapter 131 is heartbreaking. We get a harsh juxtaposition of Eren profusely apologizing to Ramsay in the past, while eradicating Ramsay and his people in the present. This juxtaposition continues building up until we finally see Eren's precious memory for the final time. When we saw this memory for the first time in Chapter 4, Eren is reflecting Armin's excitement. The next time we see it in Chapter 73, Eren is in a state of shock, shaken to his core. And now, in Chapter 131, we don't see Eren's face at all. And then we turn the page to see the first showing of the present Eren since the start of the rumbling in Chapter 122. Face turned away from view, staring into the clouds, panels of death and destruction above and below him. It's a great representation of him pushing away the death and destruction that is obscuring the view he has been dreaming of seeing since he was a child. And on the next page, we get the famous freedom panel. We see Eren embodied as a child, arms wide open, facing and embracing the horizon, above his soft steam below, masking the horrifically blood-stained earth of his near-complete genocide. Many interpret this panel as showing Eren's way of coping with the terrible acts he has committed. He is masking away the bad deeds below while staring into the horizon above an unbounded world, achieving the exact dream he had held so sacred in his precious childhood memory. But then we turn to a page that I find is surprisingly poignant and has a surprising amount of depth. We see Eren elevate his gaze. 
Now this small action by Eren may not sound too crazy, and it's something that I imagine most of the audience doesn't even really care about, but it really struck a chord with me. What we're seeing in this singular panel at the crescendo of Eren's character arc is Eren once again staring into the clouds, just as he would do every day as a child, before his hatred of Titans, before the death of his mother, and before he even had a single shred of determination to seek freedom. He's right back where he started. His head is empty, without any care for the horrific things going on around him. He was born this way, and now he retreats to it, a brief moment of character regression right at the end of his character arc. He has finally achieved his vision of freedom, but is exactly back to the same mental place he was before he even realised that this desire for freedom was his desire at all. Now I'm sure Aaron doesn't realise this, it's more of a subtle detail for us the audience. Perhaps it's meant to get us thinking, why do any of what Aaron has done at all if it just led him straight back to where he started off before his journey even began? He then turns to Armin, who looks down on him, blood-stained and in shock. This innocent precious memory they share has been destroyed. It's been shattered, just like the fractals of paths right behind them shatter the dark night sky. So hopefully by now I've convinced you as to why this memory is so important, at least to my perspective on Eren's story. But the title of this video isn't Eren's most important memory, but rather Eren's most precious memory. Chapter 139, the final chapter of Attack on Titan, opens with a conversation between Armin and Eren. Eren is finally opening up to Armin, explaining why he has done the things he's done. This conversation takes place chronologically right after Eren turns back to see the bloodstained Armin in chapter 131. But more importantly, this conversation takes place at the exact location of their shared memory. Not just some spot on the canal in Shiganshina, but the exact patch of grass where Armin first approaches Eren about the outside world. So why is this such a precious memory to Eren? Well, this is the place where he would come stare at the clouds as a kid, where he first noticed the glint in Armin's eyes, where he first considered venturing beyond the walls, and it's at this exact spot where his quest for freedom first began. And now, knowing that his death is likely fast approaching, he returns there with Armin, both appearing as children, reviving this memory one final time. 